Hello everyone, I am Bets Golden. Thank you so much for joining me today. I actually want to talk to you about something that I recently have discovered. Um, and that is, well, I didn't recently discover, but I've kind of rediscovered it in my craft room. I want to talk to you about it because I think it's just that good. Um, and that is, as I've been collaging through my my journal, you know, the art journal that I've been working on with you guys and creating all these fabulous backgrounds and pages and whatnot. Um, some of the pieces like have been hard to seal or they have been um, not hard to seal, but when you're working with a, a water soluble medium, they can move. And um, sometimes when you have charcoal, like I'm gonna do today, you want it not to move. You want it to just hold in one place. And so um, trying to come up with the perfect, like this is a charcoal one, okay? And I actually sealed this with what I'm gonna show you with today. Um, trying to come up with that can be hard. And then also adhering tissue paper down onto your pages can be challenging because um, it is thin. So if you use a gel medium that is too thick, it will not, um, it won't, it, it'll, it'll tear and you might not want it to tear. So today we're actually gonna use, I'm gonna show you a good adhesive for tissue as well as um, sealing in uh, an image that can smear. And that is the Mod Podge Gloss Ultra. Um, this, I got at Creativation. It was given to me about two years ago or a year and a half ago. I used it. I play with it. I liked it. I was like, yeah, that's kind of cool. Put it in my stash then forgot about it. And then now that I've been art journaling again, I have pulled it out because I have wanted something that wouldn't move too much a background that has been created with water soluble inks or dyes. And so today I'm going to put together this background with you using Mod Podge for some of this. Now it doesn't, they say that it can work on your thicker stuff. Um, and I'm sure that it can, but so this is the thing I want to seal, but I'm going to actually adhere this with my mixed media adhesive. And the reason is because this is a thicker type substrate and yeah, it will seal, but I really want the edges to go flat, like to really be flat. And I noticed that when I try to seal everything with my Ultra Mod Podge, it does great for tissue paper, thinner tissue, things like that. But when it comes to a, um, a, a hardier substrate and you want it completely flat and sealed, I prefer something that's a little bit heavier duty. And that might just be me, I don't know. Um, but this is great for sealing and for adhering your tissue paper um, and pretty much adhering almost anything on a water soluble page that can move. Now, with that being said, I have used this in here and let me show you what happens. If you use too much of it, it will, it will, um, it will, you know, puddle and do things like this because again, it's water soluble. It's wet. This is wet. Um, and this I love, this is wet too. And so, but this can really, if I were to put this on here to seal, it would just smoosh it all around because it's a charcoal and you have to, with the gel medium, you have to spread it over and over. Whereas this is just a spray and you go and it's done. This I sealed with the all Mod Podge, it is not lifting. There's not a lot of shine to it. So I really, really like it. So just because I'm saying that you should use this on your um, medium, your backgrounds that have water-based mediums down does not mean that it will move. It will move depending on how much you put down because it is wet, but it won't move as much as this because you're not gonna work it like you would. But if you wanna seal anything, you're gonna have to keep in mind that your background is gonna move a little. I hope that makes sense. So let's just plow right in and get started. Um, I'm gonna use this background that I created with some Glimmer Mist with you guys. And these are the pieces that I want to lay down first. So I'm gonna lay this down first, these tissue paper pieces. 
And then for my other pieces that I have, I have these pieces right here that I've already cut out from backgrounds and torn. I'm actually going to use just a glue stick. And this one is a really great one that I like. Um, and it's gonna work on that. And then for this piece that I wanna lay down, I'm going to use mixed media adhesive. And then once I'm done, I'm gonna seal it. So to get started, I just wanna give this a nice spray all over. Um, let me make sure that you can pretty much see everything in the screen. If you guys are new to my channel, welcome. Um, I want you to consider subscribing perhaps if you haven't done so. And then if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. So I just moved, you know, sprayed that down like so. And then for this one, I'm just going to line it up kind of on the bottom right there. And since it's tissue paper, it will eventually disappear into the background. And then right up here, I do have some pencil marks on where I, I kind of want it to go. And then this will start to disappear also into the background. And since it is tissue paper, you know, there may be some wrinkles because I'm not using a spatula to smooth it out. And then what you can do is I'm just taking my fingers and kind of rubbing it in. It is adhering nicely on the edges, so I'm not having to do much pushing on that. And then, um, you know, if you want it to really meld, just go over it again and you're gonna let it set up or you can take a heat gun to it. If you guys have any questions, I think I mentioned below, just you know, mention them down below. And if you um, like this video, please make sure that you like it. And then if you wanna share it, I would so appreciate it. Sorry, I had to do my plug and I got, I got carried away there. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry and then we will come back to the next step. So that did dry relatively quickly. And the one thing I wanna tell you with the Mod Podge is you do wanna shake it about 15 seconds before you spray. And then once you're done spraying, you wanna take a wipe or something that's wet and just clean out that nozzle because it will dry and you won't be able to use it no matter how wet you get it the next time. You won't be able to. So you need to make sure that you just keep it clean after each use. Now for this, I like to add just a little pop of color. So um, right here, I am going to add in some Ocean Glossy Spray. This is Dina Wakely. Um, I love these gloss sprays. I have two, three that I got at Creativation. I'm shaking it. But um, I'm gonna have to order more because I'm halfway through this bottle and that says something because I'm not a big spray miss girl, but I love these. So I'm just gonna do like a little pop of color right up at the top right there. Let that dry. The cool thing about this is it, it literally is a paint. It will dry to like a plastic and uh, we can work just right on top of it. I don't have to worry about it moving because once it's set, it's set. It is an acrylic. From here, I wanna go ahead and add these pieces, but before I do, I wanted to show you what I did to protect your surface. When you're using the Mod Podge Gloss Ultra Spray, or I think they have a matte one too, you definitely wanna protect your surface because once it dries, it is dry. So I actually just take a cheap, um, this is a, uh, oven, um, oven mat. It's a almost, I don't know, you use it in the oven. It's by chef something. I got it at Walmart, three of them for 12 bucks and it's perfect for protecting your surface. And I don't really care if it gets ruined, um, because it was only $3. So, and it won't cause I can keep using it over and over again. So this is dry now. And what I want to do from here is I just want to take and add on my, um, just put this together. So I figure I'll just do that with you right now. And this is roughly where this is gonna go. So for these, I want to take um, and put them kind of down behind like so. And then I have a couple extra pieces I wanna do. These are just backgrounds that I created. I think I did this one with paint on the gel press plate or the blends. And this one I did um, with the Distress uh, uh, inks in that warm video I did on how to make a hot background. Um, so yeah, just use your scraps. Use what you have on hand. If you have a beautiful background, I love doing this in like my art journal. And you know, this has been so good for, for um, me doing this in the art journal. All right, so um, 
I'm going to just take this and place it just kind of lining it up like so. And again, I'm just using this glue stick. Any glue stick would work, I think. You just wanna make sure that you rub it in if it's not a high quality glue stick. This is a high quality glue stick. This is actually a collage stick out of Italy. I got it at my local craft store. So you can look that up if you're interested. I'll try to find a link for you for that. Um, but I really like it. All right, and then this one, I think, just put off to the side right like that. I kind of wanted to do, you know, like a interesting sun theme on this. And then for this, now I need to glue this down because I do want to put these on and I'm trying to remember like what I had in my mind. I think maybe it was just this I was trying to do. Oh, I know what it was. I'm missing half of this. This goes down here. Wait, no. Nope, I'm wrong. It's supposed to be this goes here. And then this one goes like there. It takes me a minute. It does. I promise I had a method to my madness. All right, so again, I'm just gonna use these to do this and actually, I think I went on this side because that's a nice, nope, let's do it on this side. So, you know, I really do plan before I come on here. Um, I promise I do, and that's why <laughs> uh, I kind of had it laid out, and I'm like, ooh, I like it. All right. There we go. Okay. That Yeah, that glue stick is awesome, but I have to tell you, the Dina Wakely Diary glue stick is freaking fabulous as well. Oh, look, and then I have this one for this side. I knew I had two. Ugh. So I just basically tore paper for this. I tore a background apart that I had um, that I worked on probably for a video like a couple years ago. That's, that's kind of what I do. And voila, there we go. And now I'm ready to add this piece. But for this piece, I'm going to use um, my mixed media adhesive because it is a heavier duty piece. Now this I did in charcoal. Um, and so it's charcoal is a is a chalk and I think that's part of the reason why a lot of people don't use chalk in their art journal is because it does move and I'm going to do a completely different page up here so when I shut this book I don't want that charcoal to get up there so I need to set it and that is when your Mod Podge spray comes in handy because if I were to try to set this with Mod Podge, first of all, regular Mod Podge sticks I've discovered in art journals. And secondly, it's gonna smear the heck out of this and I don't want to smear the heck out of it. So for this one, I'm going to use just my um, mixed media adhesive and make sure I get a nice seal right. on that. So I actually accidentally got a little bit of the glue right there and I flipped it. So I need to be really careful because it will move and it like right there, it will lift. So I literally just am wanting to press it in because I don't want my image to smudge. But the mixed media adhesive by iCraft works beautifully. Um, media gel also by the gel medium by Dina Wakely works wonderfully as well on this paper. This is a very heavy duty cardstock. Um, so, you know, I mean, I guess you could use a tape runner on it as well. Um, I don't like to use tape runners and glue 
on the same type project just because especially I'm going to use a sealer because sometimes the tape buckles but that's just you know that might just be me I don't know all right so I didn't need that from here I'm going to go ahead and take my last piece and use the glue stick all over it paying close attention to those edges because I want those edges down Ooh. clean up clean up the edges because you know I want to be able to get the lid off again right <laughs> and then we're just going to slap this one down right there like so and that's the other reason why I like glue is because I can move it up all right, now before I, I go ahead and seal and add my little sentiment, which is gonna go down here, you can and you will, I want to use those Jane Davenport paint over pins. So I'm gonna flip it this way because I write this left-handed. And I'm actually, I pulled out the um, mermaid and then also the starfish because I wasn't sure how much blue would be on the background and I really want to make this pop. And so I think that this mermaid is going to be a really nice outline. Hello, my daughter just came home. So I'm just going to do this with this mermaid, like so, just to make it pop. And I'm gonna go over it kind of two times. Well, yes, two times, not kinda, but making that a little bit thicker. Like so. And then um, I wanted to also go over my mountains. Um, and I think I'll do that one with this pink, which is starfish. Hopefully that's dry enough that I can do that. It seems a little bit wet still. So I need to let that dry. Oh, I was off screen. So I got another idea. I kind of wanted to go around this loosely and just create kind of a, a focal circle, if I can, of sorts. Like so. With that pink. And then Maybe I should bring it down. To the edge like that. Then I will take maybe this I should bring down too. There we go. And I'll go ahead and just outline my mountains with the pink again or the starfish I should say and I'm going to use um, I think I'm going to use a fine tip pen on these lines just to really make them. I've opted for a food ball. I was gonna do it in white, but I just didn't like it. So I'm doing it in black and it's just going over those areas that I did that paint over pin. And it just adds a little bit of quirky definition to it, you know? I'm not looking for perfection. I never am looking for perfection, especially in an art journal. And then this right here. There we go. There we go. And since the line is totally not straight, you can just hit it two times. Because then it makes it look like it was intentionally supposed to be messy. All 
All right, and then I am gonna finish off by sealing this with that Mod Podge once again. I'm giving it a nice shake, and I'm gonna take my protector right here and protect my surface, because like I said, it is pretty strong, so you definitely um, want to make sure that you have something under to catch the excess off. But my point in doing this is I want to seal the whole thing, especially this right here, because I don't want it to smudge, it is charcoal. So this is a great way to seal your charcoal and your paints. And then I also want to make sure that I adhere down this you can and you will. And I think this was color burst that I did on, on this. So it is movable, these background pieces. So I'm just going to really focus in right there and I am hitting it pretty hard, but there we go. And then right here, I'm just gonna take and just pop that down and it will eventually just become almost one with it because it's, you know, it's the tissue paper. And there you go. Now with this, I am gonna take my paint over pin and actually circle that. But as you can see, I saturated it pretty good. So it is moving in some areas. Uh, so if you don't want it to move much, then don't saturate it as much as I did because I got it pretty wet in an attempt to protect that. So I'll be back in just a minute when this dries and we can take a look at the final I'm done piece. using my Ultra Mod Podge. So I'm just taking my wipe and making sure that I clean that nub really well for next time. Putting a lid on and then I just store it upright. I'm going to finish this off by circling this and there we go this piece is done I hope you guys enjoyed it and you found this um this beneficial uh I am discovering things as I art journal with you guys it's been a learning process for me as well and I just cannot believe these charcoal pieces that I did years ago pulling them out and actually using them. I thought they would stay stuck in my stash forever, but it was when I was learning how to draw with charcoal. I've never picked up a charcoal since then, but I didn't want to get rid of it per se, but I didn't know what to do with it. So it's super cool to see it come to life in my art journal. So definitely if you have been hanging on to things that are art pieces that you tried and you're like, well, I like it, but I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Cut it down, use it in your art journal and uh, feature it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We will catch you on the next one. Until next time, I'm Bets Golden. Happy crafting.